Hey, what's up everybody? This is Kalen from White Glove Models. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make a paint shaker for your model paints that is very inexpensive and you might even have these tools on hand. And uh, you know, I was looking around online at some of the paint shakers that they do sell on the market and for the price they just didn't really seem worth it and all they really do is kind of swirl the paint and or they don't really shake it up quite the way that I would want it but I also didn't want to pay a hundred bucks for something that just looked kind of cheesy and I wasn't sure if it would break or whatnot and they, there weren't a lot of reviews on them so I did find a solution and I'm going to share that with you guys right now So what is this revolutionary new design? Your hands and they're free. Just kidding. All right, so here it is, a jigsaw. A lot of people call this either a jigsaw or a saber saw, doesn't matter. You probably have one in your garage. If you don't, you can find one at a garage sale or a garbage sale as I call most of them, but you can find one fairly inexpensive or even at a second hand shop or whatever. And this one I've had in my shop, I I don't even think I use this once a year. You know, it, it very rarely comes out because I have other tools and, and saws that I can use for various projects. And this one I don't use very often. And the only other thing you're going to need is a quick grip. This is it. Um, you, you know, I have tons of these lying around my shop in my garage. I picked this one up at Ace, you know, probably a few years ago. And it's just... It's really cheap and inexpensive, and these things work really good for various different projects and stuff like that. But I love these things, and it dawned on me, if you just put the two together, you have a paint shaker. So let's go ahead and uh, show you how to make this happen. And you just want to be very careful. Don't hurt yourself on the blade, but on mine, there are two different screws. So this one kind of holds the saw blade down into place. And so all I want to do is just loosen that nut. I'm going to pull it out a little bit because I don't know how far I need it out for the um, section of the quick grip that I need to put in there. And then you'll just need a Allen wrench that'll go into this little nut right there. And you'll pull it or push it in there and just take it out. Now I'm filming this in here because I don't have my camcorder broke and I don't have a way to take you out to the shop. So this is the easiest way to do this. And look, the blade just pops right out. Put that out of the way, keep it safe. And then on mine, I needed to, because this is just a tiny bit, it's just a hairball thick and it wouldn't fit in there. I just put it on my workbench and ground it down just a tiny bit. You don't want to take too much off. See, it barely just kind of hit that and just took a tiny sliver off of it. So what you're gonna do, and some people, I've seen them uh, remove this guard or the, uh, the foot, they call it a foot. And what it does is it just runs along your board. You don't have to remove it. I'm not going to. And then you just slide your quick grip. So I'm going to have to loosen this one just a wee bit more. Let's see if I can make this happen. Just a hairball. And I just want to make sure that the quick grip goes in far enough. There it is, all the way in. And then you'll just tighten this screw back down. And what this one does is it just kind of flushes the uh, the blade or the quick grip now up against the back so it's not going to walk out and then turn this so you guys can see it you just go ahead and tighten down this screw all the way you want to make sure it is very good and tight so i'm going to reef on it a little bit until i feel it's snug don't want to break it or anything like that and there you go that is it you have got a paint shaker now i'm going to demonstrate this real quick for you guys okay so 
trying to do this as best as I can. We have a couple of different paint options here, and uh, you probably see them a little better here on the top camera. And one thing that I would recommend is you do this in a like a plastic bag, um, and it that way if anything does leak or spill out or it goes flying off there, it's contained in the plastic bag. And you can use either a, a like a gallon Ziploc bag or um, just a grocery bag or whatnot, uh, even, even a little paper bag or something. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to let it roll without the bag so you guys can kind of see what's going on. And I have a few different things here that we're going to test this on just to show you. And one of my... This, this is one of my pre-mixed paints that I already have all the colors in it. It's, it's uh, kind of this light metallic blue, and uh, it's not really a good image of it <laughs> on there. But that's the color I was thinking about going with the GTO. And as you can see here, the metallic likes to separate down here at the bottom because the metallic's a little bit heavier and it settles. And then you've got the blues, and then I have some uh, clear or uh, whites in here. And uh, I added some white and uh, another uh, blue color. So there's royal blue and a few others. So anyways, what has happened is it's all separated. Well, if I was to sit here and try shaking this by hand, like all day, it's barely going to do anything and really not going to get a lot of that silver up. And it just would take forever. And I, you know, when you're painting you want to especially with multiple different colors you know you don't want to spend half your day sitting there shaking paint so what i do here is i'm going to back this bottle all the way up to the bar there and then make sure it's kind of centered and then just tighten the quick grip as tight as it'll go and this is where things get fun. So I'm going to lift it off the table here so you guys can kind of get a better look at it. And let's pray that nothing goes flying across the room and sends paint all over the workbench. Okay, so one other thing is some of these drills are variable speed. And mine is a variable speed drill. Others are just you pull the trigger and it's full bore. So you want to kind of <laughs> consider that uh, before you do anything you know and maybe maybe just kind of know what kind of drill you're getting i recommend having the variable speed that way you can kind of control how much shake is happening and you're not flying all over the place which you know so far has never happened to me but here i'll show you real quick what the variable speed looks like so that so that's slow and then if i just go full bore Look at that, look at how well that is mixing right there. So I'm gonna give this maybe uh, 10 seconds more. And look at that, you've lifted most of the uh, chrome off the bottom. And uh, this probably, the, the metallic paints tend to take a little bit longer to really get a mix. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna do it at about medium speed. And there you go. That is fully mixed right there and that paint is ready to go. So now we're going to try a couple of other things and again all you got to do just pop that off. And these have really good rubber grips on them so they usually they hold the paint in there really well and they don't uh, damage any of the glass or or you know I, I marked the top of my mixed paints. This one didn't do very good. It kind of bubbled up a little bit but um, typically, I'll airbrush it uh, on there so that it leaves a nice, nice, clean um, idea of what paint is in this jar. Here's another one. So this is the uh, Tamiya X11 Chrome Silver. And like I said, see how the all the chrome has settled to the bottom there? And then you have your clear up on top. But this has been amazing in mixing these metallic paints because 
you know, one of the problems I've always had by shaking it is you're, you sit there all day shaking it and, and, oh my gosh, it seems like it just never picks up all this, the metallic off the bottom. So here we go. We're going to do this real quick and I'm going to um, probably do it at medium speed. And that was about 30 seconds and pop that out of there and look the metallic has really really come off the bottom there so definitely uh, definitely does help you I mean some of these like the metallics I usually go for about a minute or two with it and I'll show you when I open this up because you're you know what about bubbles well let's see Look at that. It's beautiful. There are no bubbles. That metallic really raised to the, or mixed, there's that metallic really mixed in really well. And it looks great. So there you go. And another paint that, here's here we have the, the blue. And the thing that kills me about this is look at the base right there. All that lighter color has gone to the bottom. And then you have that dark and then the clear. And so let's go ahead and put this jar in here and see what happens so again i put it all the way to the back and tighten it down as tight as it'll go and then i'm going to go at about medium speed all right so that was a minute pop that off and look at that. It is really starting to pick up all that paint down on the bottom there. And then we'll go ahead and open it up again so you guys can take a look inside. And look at that. No bubbles or anything. It's perfect. Okay, so now let's move off to a primer. So here I have the, um, I can never say this right, I think it's Steinol Res, I don't know. This is made by Badger, and uh, probably one of my favorite go-to primers. I got two of these that we're going to shake up today because I'm actually going to be using them here in a few minutes. But um, we have the, uh, what is this? This is the dull pink and the gray primer. And these kind of settle a little bit, and then you get this... Um, part of the this is more of the color I think that ends up on top so these don't fit this direction unfortunately um, I don't know if I mean you could try to get a longer one but the usually they have a bigger bar and they don't fit so what I do on these and you got to be super careful but I put it in there squeeze it a little bit and this is where I would highly highly recommend doing it in a bag but I'm going to demonstrate this with no bag just for you guys to see. And I'm not going to go full blast on this because I don't want it going flying anywhere. And um, I'll give you kind of a different angle of this as well. But I am protecting it with my hand because I do not want this going flying off. And there you go, that should be mixed up enough to use. And all that color, see there's there's just a tiny bit down on the bottom there, but you can just you know finish shaking it um, this way. And you're gonna end up getting pretty much all of that color off the bottom. So pretty simple and efficient way to mix up some of these paints. And there you go, it just minimizes your, your having to hand shake it. We also have 
the Vallejo surface primer and what I do with this because this is water based um, from my understanding and so I'll shake it up real good and that is usually pretty well mixed but we're gonna try it in this shaker again it won't fit the other way but I'm gonna give this a whirl and where I haven't tried this before with the Vallejos because usually I just shake these by hand but I'm curious as you are too probably so let's go ahead and give it about 20 seconds or so or 30 seconds on the uh, shaker here and that is still good and tight hasn't walked out or anything but always double check that because you don't want this to go flying out <laughs> and uh, making a mess somewhere so let's go ahead and give this a whirl and see what happens So now I'm just going at about a, a third speed, so which is one of the nice things about having a variable speed. So And it's doing really good. It's not trying to fly out or anything. So let's do this for about uh, 20 more seconds. And there you go. See, that actually worked out really well. So I'll probably be uh, doing that more so just to make sure I get all that sludge and stuff off the bottom mixed in really well. And by sludge, I don't mean like bad paint. That's just what most of the, uh, the ingredients separate in these uh, primers as well. So I just want to make sure I get all of that mixed in very well. And then it'll be ready to go through my airbrush. So let's take a look inside real quick and I'm going to, before I put the cap back on, I'm going to clean this up because I don't want any of that stuff going into my airbrush. So I'm just going to grab a paper towel and clean all this up really quick and just clean up the top here. And there we go. Usually I don't take the uh, cap off um, on any of these bottles because I usually you know pour it with the provided cap so <laughs> hopefully I don't get any little pieces stuck in there and I do recommend using a filter too when you're um, putting paint into a bottle or um, like for these for instance here I'll show you I have a this one which is the Vallejo primer and this is what comes out of my cup I don't usually pour that back into there when I'm done using a, uh, a paint or a primer in my air gun, I'll usually put it into one of these uh, empty bottles and then I'll label it. And um, the reason I do that is because I, when you, you know, it's, you, sometimes you get little chunks or little pieces that kind of dry up on the, in the cup of the airbrush. And I don't want that going back into my good primer. So I usually just dump it into these and it works out really well for me. And I can just toss this baby on here and see how it's separated. I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down, and this is separated right there. Just give it a few, you know, like on that. This one's not very full, so I'm probably just going to do like 20 seconds or so. there we go it's all mixed up and this is ready to use so when you are just a little uh, tip if you are there are a few bubbles in this because it is water based and it's that Vallejo primer but those will settle down after a little bit may I'm taking a huge risk opening this right now just because I'm probably gonna get some crud in there but that's one thing that I wanted to talk about is yeah, there's a few bubbles because this is a water-based primer, but other than that, it turned out pretty well. And again, I'm going to clean up this rim because these are those little chunks I'm talking about. You don't want these ending up into your cup of your airbrush. And so I'll just clean that up really quick there and we're ready to go. So one thing that you do want to do whenever you are using 
a primer that is, I call this the used primers because they've been through the gun once already. And uh, when you are using this and putting this back into your airbrush, don't put it in straight. What you want to do is it, it, they're, they're kind of hard to find right now, but they have these little tiny cup strainers that you can buy. And with the cup strainer, what it allows is it uh, doesn't allow any of that, the big chunks or anything that can clog your airbrush. And you just strain it, put it back into your airbrush, and you can keep using this. This one is a little watered down because I had watered it down a, a tiny bit. But there you go. I mean, pretty much didn't cost me anything because um, I already had my jigsaw, as I call it, also called a saber saw, and uh, I had the clamp. So I hope you guys found this useful. Um, I know I, I definitely will be using this from now on to mix my paints, and you do have to get a little creative at times. Um, do it however you want. But, you know, I mean, I, I had all this stuff, and it's free basically and if you don't own a jigsaw like i said you can just go down to even a pawn shop or or a, a garage sale or whatever and you'll find them very inexpensive i do recommend getting one that has the variable speed just because um they it kind of allows you to run at half speed which seemed to work the best because it allows the paint to kind of shake a little better and it's not just doing a straight thing but anyways um and then just grab a quick grip. There you go. And you've got a paint shaker. So anyway, if you found this video useful, hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. see it popped out but there you go so you know if you guys found this video useful hit hit the uh... so anyway if you guys found this video useful hit the like button stand by So anyway, if you found this...